We know Andrew Wyatt as the man who led Bill Cosby out of court in handcuffs. This is Aaron Saeed. Now he's leading us to the comedian's home for the past 140 days. SCI Phoenix in Collegeville, the maximum security prison about an hour outside of Center City. So you've taken this drive at least 15 times. This is my 15th time. It's a 35 mile ride down 76 to the Pennsylvania Turnpike, one that Wyatt takes every other week. When I walk into that room with him, he stand up straight, shakes your hand, and he's smiling. Right now, he is so creative right now. You know, I was talking to Mrs. Cosby last night, and she was talking about how now he's more creative than ever. You know, he is in his mind developing shows, in his mind developing documentaries. While he's in prison. While he's in prison. Preparing for the next chapter. Everything that you see us doing has been designed and implemented by Mrs. Cosby. She runs the entire show. We go over our next moves with her, you know, even this, this interview. Uh, so she's aware? Yeah, she's aware. Uh, she's very aware. She's uh, appreciative that, uh, you know, interviews are happening, especially around this time of Black History Month, to talk about Mr. Cosby because he is a civil rights icon. Civil rights, a phrase mentioned several times over two days of interviews with Wyatt, both during our drive and in our studios a day earlier. He says Bill Cosby is channeling civil rights leaders, believing he was railroaded by a system that targets black men. He said, look, I spent time with MLK. I spent time with Malcolm X. I spent time with Nelson Mandela. They told me if I live long enough and if I keep doing what I'm doing out here uh, to humanize people, one day I, I'm going to end up in a situation like this. Cosby was convicted of drugging and sexually assaulting Andrea Constant in his home back in 2004. When I visit him, uh, it's, it's nothing sad about it. He's not sad. He's not remorseful because he did nothing wrong. Him and Mrs. Cosby dealt with their infidelity in the privacy of their marriage. What about all of the women that have come forward and said, no, nah, this was more than infidelity? The sheer volume of, of people coming forward making an accusation doesn't mean that it's true. And what America has said is that women don't lie. You know, women do lie. It's a, it's a pretty dire situation to have him in prison. But uh, I always say Montgomery County got what they wanted, but they gave us what we needed. Because now the world gets to see the injustice. The world gets to see how, you know, Bill Cosby was railroaded. And you have people like Weinstein out, movies still playing. None of, show, none of his projects have been taken off of the airways. Uh, the people in his film still get to make a living. Uh, you have people who've been accused of things like Kevin Spacey, no jail time. This, as Mr. Cosby says to me at the end of every visit, this is bigger than Bill Cosby. Right now, uh, I'm his only visitor outside of his attorneys, and that's the way he wants it. So Camille Cosby has not visited him? She has not visited him. Uh, he does not want her to visit him. Wyatt told me Cosby prefers to speak to his wife by phone three times a day for three minutes, the most he's allowed. And Cosby's day begins before dawn. And he said, wake me up at 3.30 a.m. They wake him up at 3.30 a.m. and he exercises. He's in his cell, he does leg lifts. He pushes up against the bed and does push-ups to stay in shape. He showers and he waits for breakfast. Food that he rinses off thoroughly to cut down on the sodium. Wyatt says it's what he does with every meal. He puts it in a little cup, he walks over to a sink, he runs water in the cup over the food, shakes the, f the food up and drains it. And he does that three times and he eats the food. He looks really amazing. He's down to 195 pounds. He hasn't eaten any bread, no dessert and he hasn't drank any coffee since he's been in there. Now, the, the funny part about it, Mrs. Cosby has been trying to stop him from drinking coffee for 55 years, and she said it took this to stop him from drinking coffee. When you hear him describe how he's surviving, what do you think? Uh, he's mentally strong. He's just a strong man. The last time we saw Andrew Wyatt and Bill Cosby together was the day Cosby was led away in handcuffs. What was that last ride like? on the way to sentencing. Look, Mr. Cosby had prepared himself. He prepared all of us probably three, four months. 
before sentencing. And he said, look, this guy has a vendetta against me and he's gonna throw the book at me. He said, so I'm ready, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go in, don't worry about me. So he knew what was gonna happen. He knew, he knew. Every day since, Wyatt says Cosby is all about making the most of his situation. He doesn't have a cellmate, but other inmates are assigned to help Cosby get around, mostly because of his age and the fact that he's legally blind. And Wyatt says he enjoys talking to them, hearing their stories, encouraging them. He said he's, despite the circumstances, he said this is an amazing experience. Did he really use the term amazing experience? Yeah, he used the term amazing experience. After about 50 minutes in the car, this is, this is the place. We pulled up to SCI Phoenix. I'm going to visit the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Known here as inmate NN7687. In Collegeville, Erin Coleman, NBC 10 News. Hey guys, it is Nicole here back on this Thursday night. I hope you guys are all doing well out there and welcome back to Nicole's View. So you all know I was going to speak on this. Uh, Mr. Cosby has now become a staple of my channel because I've been following this lynching since the beginning. Um, I attended the second trial, the one that you know, they um, locked him up in jail for. And I saw it live and in living color. I smell the corruption. I smell the racism. I smelled it all. I took it all in, folks. And, you know, it's surreal to be here now thinking about that, thinking about how they did this man. They railroaded this man. America's favorite pastime, railroading black men. You know, what else is new? Anyway, so Mr. Andrew Wyatt, Mr. Cosby's spokesperson, did an interview with NBC10 and out of Philadelphia, and he talked about uh, how Mr. Cosby is faring in prison and whatnot, you know, to, to dispel the rumors and any other misinformation and basically Mr. Wyatt was very matter of fact you know he's like and despite of him being a political prisoner Mr. Cosby is still strong mentally he is doing very well and he has nothing to be remorseful about and that is true he is a political prisoner. I can say that 100%. I saw it with my own two eyes. I saw the agenda. And so now that the media, they can't attack him for standing up for himself as a black man in America. They, they can't do that. So they have to find their way to make this out to be... Um, like he's crazy, like he's a kook, like he's just, he's delusional. This is what they have to do now. This is how they have to continue the narrative that he is the bad boogie black man that raped a bunch of women. This is America. This is how America gets down, okay? So now you have your talking hens like on the talk, you're sharing Osbournes and the rest of them. Um, you have other folks who I'm going to show once I finish this, reading this article, you know, the folks at ET Canada be being very smug and arrogant and snarky and mean spirited and hateful, you know, how they talk about Cosby and all I can say is my hat off to you. Mr. Cosby, because we see as clear as day what they are doing. 
He's not going to beg. He's not telling his lawyers, get me out of here. Uh, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, I'll, I'll make up a confession. This is what the media wants. They want to report that, but they can't. Because Mr. Cosby is being the rebellious slave. They don't want to hear this. So they have to do whatever they can to flip the script. So now here we are. Sharon Osborne of all people, of all people, who shouldn't be saying a word about anybody's husband, okay? You know who she's married to. That demented, sick looking Ozzy Osborne. The same cat that used to literally bite animals' heads off in concert. That Ozzy Osbourne. But you know, America celebrates its um, devils, uh, these dysfunctional, sick, twisted folks, okay? That's what they celebrate. And folks like the us, they are going to demonize. Like Cosby, demonize, okay? So this is... I'm reading from Entertainment Tonight Canada, and it says, Bill Cosby spokesperson tells Sharon Osbourne, you should know how damaging inaccurate information can be. And he's right. Good for Mr. Wyatt for calling these devils out. Bill Cosby spokesperson is defending his client against comments recently made by the talk host Sharon Osbourne. The ladies of the talk chastise Cosby for believing he was a political prisoner and according to his spokesperson, comparing himself to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. And in that clip, I don't believe that Mr. Cosby is saying he's just like these folks. That's not what he's saying, but your mainstream media, they're going to manipulate, lie, and try to make it into something else. To me, I took his comment as they had to deal with this even worse. They had to be put in a prison system, had to go to jail, had to deal with white supremacy. So if they can do it, if someone like a Nelson Mandela can be locked up for over 20 plus years, then me, Bill Cosby, as a black man in America, I take inspiration from that. And I know that when I get to a certain peak, a certain stature, and if you're still living, they're going to come from me too. That is what he was saying. But you know, your racist mainstream media, they only have one job. And that is to make this man a pariah, make folks still hate him, and continue with the narrative. This is what this is. So continuing in one of the depositions, years before this all blew up. Now this is Sharon Osbourne talking, okay? Um, in one of the depositions, years before this all blew up, he did admit to giving women that date rape drug. This is a flat out lie. Nowhere in that deposition, and she says depositions, but it was just this one, just this one from 2005. He did not admit that. Quaaludes were not date rape drugs. That's not how they worked. Quaaludes were legal was a legal drug that folks use for many things. A lot of folks use them for pain issues. Mr. Cosby said he used them because I was at the trial. I know he said the main reason he used them was because he had back issues. And then sometimes folks use them to relax. They were a aphrodisiac for some folks and they used them freely in the seventies. They were not a date break drug. You cannot plonk. Okay, you cannot just put a quaalude in a drink. You, it, it doesn't work like that. You taste it immediately. You know your drink is messed up. So, once again, Sharon Osbourne 
is basically reading the script that her massa gave her to read. And this is what they're paid to do. Continuing. Um, he did admit to giving women that date rate drug, Osborne, argued. Lie. He admitted it very freely. No, he did not. Not forced or, or tortured. He said he did it. This man wants to be some sort of folk hero. For what? You have abused women for years and you're paying the price. Whether you're 82 or 22, you're paying the price. This is all lies. He went to trial for one woman. These other women, it doesn't matter. Why? Because many of them were lies. And the five that were a part of this second trial, this is why they had to be included. Because Andreas Constant's case was so weak, so non-existent, no evidence, that the DA, your racist, corrupt DA, Democrat Kevin Steele, had to include these other five women to prejudice the jury. And that is exactly what they did. Okay? But you know, folks like Sharon Osborne, they're reading from a script, or if they're not reading from a script, they're just making up crap as they go. This is what they do. Uh, Andrew Wyatt, the official spokesperson for Cosby, reprimanded Osborne for spreading inaccurate information to an impressionable television audience. Exactly. And this is what he wrote. In response to Sharon Osborne's comments on the talk, Andrew Wyatt emphasizes, emphasizes, excuse me, that Bill Cosby never admitted in his deposition testimony or anywhere else to any non-consensual sexual contact with any woman and or the drugging of anyone. He has never admitted to spiking drinks as the media wants you to believe. He has steadfastly maintained his innocence before and after being convicted of aggravated indecent assault. As a person who has been involved in a few Hollywood scandals, Miss Osborne, including recent stories of drugging your husband to find out about his infidelities. You should know how damaging inaccurate information can be. With the talk, you are responsible for highlighting the facts of an issue, not sensationalizing them for viewership. Most of the mainstream media has been irresponsible, egregious, and inexcusable with misleading and out of context coverage regarding Bill Cosby's deposition testimony. The media's, now this is a quote from Malcolm X, the media's the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent and that's power because they control the minds of the masses. Malcolm X. Yes, yes, yes. That is exactly right. And that is exactly what they did to Bill Cosby. That is exactly what they did to him. Um, it goes on to say he concluded his post with a quote from Malcolm X, as I just read, about the power of media. Uh, this was accompanied by hashtags. Uh, hashtag free Bill Cosby and hashtag political prisoner. All right. And that is the end of the article. Now, I'm going to show you guys. This is your trashy, um, low-down, despicable, disgusting mainstream media. These two idiots that I'm going to show you, they're uh, out of Canada, Entertainment Tonight out of, you know, ET Canada. Anyway, but I just want you guys to see, this is what they do. Okay, they bring out their shields like this to, you know, basically continue the narrative. Now they're going to label him crazy. He's a kook, a political prisoner. That's exactly what he is. I'm going to show you guys. Let me go ahead and expand it. Because this is why I started my channel. To show folks who don't see what they're doing the agenda. This is what they do, all right? 
Usually I would make it separate, but you know what? They're not even worth all my all that. So I'm just gonna do it freestyle from here. Here we go. Bill Cosby's spokesperson says that he's doing amazing in prison. <laughs> This story aired on NBC 10 Philadelphia last night, and today Bill Cosby contacted the reporter Aaron Coleman. How smug is this dude in the black jacket? Smug. I'd even go on a limb and say racist. Saying that he has no remorse because he is a victim of entrapment. Now, here we go. This is what he wrote to Aaron. A low-life district attorney and a corrupt judge needed me guilty now, not for justice, but, but for their political aspirations, my political beliefs, my actions of trying to humanize all races, genders, and religions, landing me in this place surrounded by barbed wire fencing, a room made of steel and iron. So I now have a temporary residence that resembles the quarters of some of the greatest political prisoners. Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, Nelson Mandela. Mahatma Gandhi. He can't even say Mahatma Gandhi. What an idiot. Randall Robinson and Dr. Benjamin Chavez. I stand upright as a political prisoner and I smile. The truth is strong. Wow, how far gone do you have to be? <laughs> uh, definitely a different tone of what aired on NBC last night here. How far gone. You see what they're doing? Now they're going to say he's crazy. He's cuckoo. He's in prison now. So. Here's some of the interview with Cosby's spokesperson. He's down to what? Well, I'm going to go ahead and skip through this because you guys already saw this at the beginning of my video. My main point is, this is this is how these devils roll. That's a good spokesperson. He makes it seem like Bill Cosby is only living his own life. <laughs> you see, no, he's just saying you devils have not broken his spirit. That's what he's saying. The two demons at entertainment tonight. That's what he's saying. He's like, I'm a black man in America. I expect this. They made sure that I don't leave this place a free black man. He knew his 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 number was gonna be called. That's what he means. I'm not going to give you, devil. The satisfaction of thinking that I'm going to beg and plead when I know I was set up. I am a political prisoner. Racist, trashy, low-down, disgusting district attorney Kevin Steele ran his campaign. You can go look it up. You, there's a YouTube video of him talking about going after Bill Cosby. What the hell do you idiots think that is? It's political. It's racist. It's all of the above. He's lost weight. He stopped drinking coffee. <laughs> but I mean, now he says, well, it's official. Bill Cosby has gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Yeah, just the idea that he feels that not a, like I understand you say that you were railroaded or that you didn't do the thing they said you did right but to take the political prisoner angle yeah. you were so far gone no devil no you POS I'm trying to recur my cursing in the videos you POS he is a political prisoner the DA ran his campaign on bringing down Bill Cosby you POS. Bring up Gandhi. So far and gone. Okay. And let me just say this. Let me just say this. The, the statement that Cosby released was perfect. I just wish he wouldn't have brought up Gandhi because Gandhi was a bona fide racist who hated black people. I wish he wouldn't have added him in there. Because these devils, they don't want to talk about that part of him though. They don't want to talk about that. Okay. Says Bill has some nerve, disappointing human being. I still love the show, though. That's a lot of people still want to watch the Cosby Show. It was hard to uh, hard to watch it. But yeah, it's so strange. So strange. So bizarre. So oh, it's just you know. You, you see, you see how they do, folks. This is how they do. But see, thank God for your everyday thinking person like me. Shout out to Harvey at your world, your view. You know. 
Drew of Drew Story News, all of you, all of you, Tori and Rain, all of you, my sister, the black nationalist, Erica, we are out here saying, no, you devil, you are not going to sit up here and lie and twist facts. This is why we have to push hard against this propaganda. I have the utmost respect for him, Mr. Cosby, um, because when his parole comes up and what, if he's still in there after three years and it's time for him to be paroled and they're going to see if he is going to um, be remorseful. And if he looks at them and says, I have nothing to be remorseful for, I did nothing. I am an innocent man. And if that happens and he has to go back to prison and serve the rest of the term, which is, I believe, 10 years is like the max. And if if that happens and he makes it out and God, I hope he does. I, I hope he can get out, though, sooner rather than later. But if that happens then I hope that he comes out of that prison. I hope he comes out smiling. I hope he comes out in shape. I hope he comes out the healthiest he's ever been in his life. That would be the ultimate karma. That would kill them. They would have to literally tr just try to come for him. Because what can you do? What can you do? We are some of the strongest people walking this planet, the black man and the black woman. We've had to endure so much tragedy, so much hell on earth, and we still rise up, we still smile, we say, you devil, you POS, y'all are not going to break my spirit, y'all are not going to do this. I come, I come from my ancestors, you devils, you will not break me. And to that, I say kudos. Mr. Cosby, we are out here trying to get the word out, trying to get the truth out to let these devils know, no, you will not take my dignity. You will not take my respect. You will not take it. My spirit, you won't take it. Cosby has said, there's people who have been in worse situations than me and they still made it out. I'm going to be all right. That is what he's telling us. I'm going to be all right. I stand on the, so, the, the shoulders of my ancestors. We've had to deal with worse. If this was 50, 60 years ago, Cosby would probably be hanging from a tree right now. Okay. But this just shows you how they get down in this country. This is what they do. And we will call it out. I will call it out at any chance I get. Because Cosby is representative for all black men. No matter what you say, no matter what you think, he is that extension. Because that's what they want to do to all black men. Label you sexual violent predators. This is what they want to do. And, he, and another thing I love, he's like, I will not go to your classes. I will not go to your classes. Defiant. That's what you do. You tell them to kiss, kiss your you know what. <laughs> okay? But anyway, I love it. I love it. Every minute, every second of it. You fight... So you can't fight anymore. He's like, you're not going to have me on my knees begging. Oh, no, you won't. A lot of folks forget Cosby. When he was younger, he went to the military. This is just, this is just more discipline for him now. He's like, oh, oh, this? Oh, y'all thought I was going to crumble and beg for forgiveness? Bear for masses forgiveness? Oh no. And I really hope if he has to serve three years, I, I, I hope he doesn't. Even when it's time for his parole and they ask him, how do you feel? Are you remorseful? And he says the same thing he's saying now. Oh, he's going to have my 
most highest respect. Now, if he has to maybe lie a little bit, I, I, I get it. Because he probably would be maybe tired of prison. But if he doesn't, I will have just the highest level of respect for him. Because that's telling them to their faces, you have not broken me. You will not break my spirit. You will not take that away from me. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video.